So recently on the podcast, I talked about camber on plane irons, and I've had a lot of questions about it. Um, so that's what I want to talk about today. Um, a little bit about amount of camber on planes, but also how to establish that camber on different planes. So I'm going to do two videos on this, just to try and keep it brief. The first one will be on using a grinder to establish camber. I'm going to use that for something like this jack plane or four plane here because I'm going to be grinding a really heavy camber. The next video I'll do is show you how to establish camber without a grinder. And we'll just do it with a honing guide and a diamond stone. And I'll do that on this triplane here that's going to require a little bit less camber. For today, we're just going to focus on the four plane. So there's been quite a bit of ink spilled regarding differing amounts of camber. But there hasn't been a whole lot talked about why we establish the amount of camber that we do. Probably the, the most popular way that camber is described these days is through the use of a radius. The problem is um, radius, radius can, can be different. The radius itself, that's not going to change from one iron to the next. But when you start to get different irons and different widths of irons, that radius can really make a difference in how much effective camber or projection of the iron we're actually getting. The way I like to think of camber is a little bit different. I like to think of it in terms of projection. So in other words, if I put this iron in here and I have a cambered iron, if I project, if I expose a certain amount of iron below the sole of the plane, when the corners of the plane are no longer visible, when I have a camber below the plane, below the, the sole of the plane, what's the depth of cut in the center of that iron? That's what I mean by projection. And what we find is that the same amount of projection can translate to a lot of different radius depending upon the width of the plane iron. For a plane with a one and three quarter inch iron, that 32nd inch of projection equates to about an eight and three quarter inch radius on the edge of the iron. If we step that iron up to two inches, that same 32nd inch of projection equates to about 11 and a half inch radius on the edge of the iron. On a two and a quarter inch iron, a 32nd of an inch of projection is about a 14 and a half inch radius. And on a two and a half inch iron, that same 32nd of an inch projection is about an 18 inch radius. So today, what I wanna talk about is how to establish your camber based on the amount of projection. Now my goal with the jack plane is to take the thickest full width shaving that I possibly can. I don't want to take a sixteenth of an inch shaving but only use the middle inch of the plane. This has got a two and a quarter inch wide iron. In order for me to be most efficient, I want to use as much of this blade width as I can. So I'm going to set my projection so that I'm using almost the entire blade width, yet still taking a significant amount of material. And I find about a 32nd of an inch thick um, is about the maximum you can go and take a full width shaving in the most popular hardwoods and softwoods that we use in the United States. So let me show you how I figure out exactly how much camber I'm gonna put in this iron for that 32nd of an inch projection. So the first thing that I wanna do is color the back of the iron. And this is gonna give me a good reference, um, nice dark line that I can uh, then use to scribe the camber on the back of the iron. So we'll put the iron back together. I'm gonna back, pull the, uh, the chip breaker way back. I'm not gonna bother setting it close. We'll put the iron back in the plane I'm going to set the wedge somewhat loose. I'm going to turn the plane body over. Now I'm going to use a little um, dial caliper. You don't have to use a caliper. You can use a combination square or just a ruler. Um, and I want to go 
to approximately a 32nd of an inch. Now that 32nd of an inch, this is a, a 64th inch caliper, so I can go right there to about a 32nd. I'm going to put that on and I'm going to raise the blade until I'm roughly a 32nd of an inch proud of the sole. Now that's a pretty good projection right there. So I'm going to sight down. I'm going to use my caliper to see where I am. And that's a pretty good projection. That's about 3 64th, so a little more than a 32nd of an inch. So now what I'll do is I'll take the scribing pin from a combination square and I'm going to run that on the outer edges of the iron, just on the corners. So now I can take the iron out and you can see what I have is a line here on the corner and a line here on the corner. And hopefully you can see that in the camera. Those lines tell me how far I have to grind the corners back to establish that 32nd of an inch camber. So now I'm going to go over to my grinder and establish the camber. So after marking the iron from the plane, I went back and I took a square and that scribe and I scribed a straight line right across the edge of the iron. Now this iron has already been ground straight. Uh, and it's important that you start with a good edge that's ground straight across and mostly power, mostly uh, square to both sides of the iron. Now on these old irons, sometimes you won't be able to get it square to both sides because sometimes the sides are not exactly parallel. Um, if they're not, just kind of split the, split the difference. Um, but then I took that scribe, the, uh, the little scribe from the combination square, I used my little combination square and I made a straight line right across the entire surface um, of the iron, across the entire edge. And what that's going to do is help to guide me as I'm sharpening. I don't actually need to draw a curve because my eye is going to be able to, to see the curve um, in relationship to the straight line that I already scribed. Now I'm using a high speed grinder. On the, it, it is a uh, variable speed, but I'm using it on its highest speed. I have a 46 grit wheel, which is a, a good coarse wheel. I've dressed the wheel with a diamond dressing tool so that the surface of the wheel is clean and it has a slight crown on it. Now I'm ready to grind. I also have uh, a little bit of water so that I'll be able to uh, cool the edge as I grind. Now I can go ahead and grind that camber. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by grinding back the corners and I'm going to grind a blunt edge across this so that I, I don't have to worry about um, burning or bluing the edge as I'm grinding in the camber. So once the grinder's up to speed, I'll go ahead and I'll start by square blunt grinding the corners. And what I'm doing is I'm starting to grind the edge, but I'm only working on the sides and I'm working perpendicular to the stone. And I'm not touching the middle of the iron. And you can see already, I'm very quickly starting to establish a, a curve on here. And I'm trying to very lightly touch the, the grinding wheel. Now, once I start to get my, uh, my camber, I can check it with a square. 
check it up against the light and see about how even I am. And that looks pretty good. I think I want to take down the left side just a little bit more. And I finish up with one nice pass along the entire edge to smooth out the, uh, the entirety of the camber and make sure that I don't have a jagged edge. Now I can go to grinding the bevel. When I grind the bevel, again I'm going to start at the outside edges because the outside edges have the thickest amount of flat and I want to get rid of that first. So as I start to grind, I'll just touch the, the corners and start by trying to bring them down even with the center. And my goal is to gr is not to my goal is to grind in a smooth curve. I don't want to approach the grinder square here and I don't want to approach the grinder square here. The only time I should be perpendicular or square to the grinder is at the center. So I'm using that center as sort of a pivot point and I'm going to roll the blade as I grind. So I'm trying to grind out and feather out that bevel and I'm trying to create this if you can imagine this starburst pattern or um, you know the grinding marks should kind of radiate from the center towards the corner when you look at that bevel. So that's the way I, I tend to grind. And I'm keeping an eye on that edge. Now this was ground originally at a very shallow angle so it's not going to take me long to grind the camber, the bevel on the camber. And if I can see reflection along this edge, I know I've still got more to grind. Once I stop seeing the reflection, then I know I'm done. And I'm very close here. So I'm making very light touch. And that's about it for this iron. As I mentioned, originally this iron was ground fairly shallow. So I don't have to grind the entire bevel. Um, I had originally ground this out at about uh, 20 to 25 degrees and I'm now grinding the camber at about 30, roughly 30 degrees. Um, so this allows me to grind a lot faster because I don't have to grind a lot of material away and I'll hone at that 30, somewhere about 30 to 35 degrees at that angle. But now you can see I have a a good camber established and this iron is ready to hone. To hone, I'm going to use a honing guide here just for a little change of pace. You know, you've seen me do this freehand before so uh, that's really nothing new. And uh, what you'll notice is I start at a corner with finger pressure and, when, and I move across the blade with my finger pressure and that tends to roll the edge over. Uh, with the Eclipse Guide that I'm using, the wheel is nice and narrow, so it allows me to really uh, kind of roll and follow the edge as I'm honing. And you can do this freehand as well. You don't uh, need to use a honing guide. And I start with my coarse diamond and I work up through the three grits of water stones that I have, and then I finish up by polishing the back of the blade before I put the blade back together and put everything back in the plane. So that covers the process for grinding and honing a camber on something with a significant camber like this four plane. So the next time I'll cover honing, grinding uh, a camber on something that, that doesn't have quite as much camber, um, like a triplane, and I'll do that without the aid of a grinder 
which will hopefully help those of you who don't have a grinder.